Dubai, a desert emirate being shaped to become the leisure capital of the oil-rich Gulf. We have the tallest building. We've got the greatest hotels. We are creating something very, very special. A centerpiece of this new Dubai will be a shopping mall designed to outstrip all malls. With 1,200 shops and a slogan as brash as its scale, everything you desire. Completed to a next to impossible deadline. The biggest challenge that we have to face is time. People haven't done anything as this size this quickly before. Riding on its success, a multi-million dollar price tag and the reputation of Dubai. A record-beating aquarium, an ice rink, and an entertainment center complete with a roller coaster. Stretching over one square kilometer, it sits on a mega floor space that beats the reigning mega mall in China and dwarfs the Mall of America hands down. the original schedule. It's not just the open halls that are causing problems. The whole design is throwing up challenges for the architect. The complex has been designed as 37 separate buildings. Local codes say all structures must hold up against earthquakes up to 5.5 on the Richter scale. So each building is reinforced by sheer walls that withstand lateral force. A side-to-side -side motion won't bring it down. A 100 millimeter gap between each building not only allows for expansion in the desert heat, but if one should fall in an earthquake, it won't bring down any others with it. The Dubai Mall, largest in the world. It holds 95 elevators, 150 escalators, with plans to attract 30 million visitors in the first year alone to its array of glitzy shops. At its center is the aquarium with 400 sharks. In total, more than 33,000 marine creatures can be viewed through a panel so large, it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. The chairman made sure of that. The size is, you know, it's, not, it's important, but it doesn't really shake me. But yes, I want to know how, how big it is, what's in there. How many species? So you see, you know, we've got 33,000 species in this thing. We've got 400 sharks. Say, so, okay, now we're talking, you know. One of the most important attractions at the mall will be the aquarium. Once done, it's designed to impress. That means it's going to have to be big. It will hold 10 million liters of water equivalent to four Olympic-sized pools. And acrylic panels 750 millimeters thick will hold back the enormous pressure of the water. By heating and cooling the panels, the joints will disappear, creating a single panel so big, it'll make the Guinness Book of World Records. The centerpiece of the aquarium will be a transparent tunnel 48 meters long. Sitting at the tank floor, 10 meters down, it will be subject to immense pressures. Iron rings help to keep its shape. It has used up the entire supply of acrylic from two factories for a year. It's had to be precision manufactured in four massive pieces. And each giant piece weighs 32 tons and is extremely fragile. So moving them requires care. A single wooden rolling jack is called in. The plan is to hoist the tunnel in, roll it along, and place it in position. Sounds deceptively simple. The aquarium is the one that we're, we're all nervous about. If something goes wrong, the lead time to fix it means going back to the manufacturers. It's, they're in different countries, and they're many months away from reproducing and, and reissuing. See the play gap inside in the wheel. It's all done under the watchful eye of manager Peter Knapp. It's the first time anyone here has attempted anything like this. Everything is done in slow motion. 
even with something as large as this, there's little margin for error. The skilled workers build up the supports to level the jack before it inches up to take the weight of the tunnel. The tunnel lifts into the air all right, but soon the crew spots something. The tunnel is distorting under its own weight. The pressure has forced the sides to curve inward. If they set it down now, it will shatter. My worst nightmare is if it were to fall and it breaks. The building, this, the, the states, has a, they have a fabrication time of a number of months. It takes a number of weeks to get here. Because we have to bring the tunnel back in, there are things outside that cannot be done until the tunnel section is here. So the entire project, or part of the entire project, is going to be delayed for half a year to a year. The next day, after a night of head scratching, they've come up with a new idea to move the aquarium tunnel into place. In theory, the plan should work. The measurements add up. So they spread the load, and the tunnel is now balanced across two separate jacks. The supports come down piece by piece, and slowly the tunnel inches downwards. But just when they think the plan is working, the crew notice that the jacks are out of sync, and their load is coming down at an angle. The pressure of 32 tons of acrylic is concentrated onto one corner. If they try to set it down, the edge will snap off. It's not an easy job. Um, there is stress because of, um, if something goes wrong, there's you know the consequences on it. So that does put quite a bit of stress on you. Peter keeps at work, adjusting with his control units, balancing the two jacks carefully keeping the tunnel straight. After eight hours, he thinks he's got it right. No one knows for sure until the tunnel hits bottom. All that remains is to haul it into place with a rather simple lever and pulley system. Only another three pieces to go. When they're all in place, they will be welded together, made watertight, and covered with 10 million liters of water. The Gold Souk is just part of this world record-beating mall. Among its 1,200 shops is a record-breaking aquarium, an Olympic-sized ice rink, and an entertainment center complete with a roller coaster under its massive roof. It's a mall that could not be built without a grand ambition. This is huge. We will be having almost 30 million people coming in annually to this mall. So my challenge was still and then is that how can I bring people with maximum comfort and let them go home with maximum comfort. The job they had, to make the mall function at a human level. Not easy, and this job was left in the hands of one of her team members, T, an expert in getting people around large buildings without getting lost. The Dubai Mall is basically like, you know, a huge quadrant, you know, so that's the circulation area that you move around. The loop keeps shoppers moving through the mall. With no side alleys and narrow passageways, people won't get lost and can spend their time spending money. And all shops get prime locations, meaning rents can be high. For the less intrepid shopper, the architects also designed a shortcut through the loop. This leads past the aquarium, a landmark to help shoppers keep their bearings. 
the architects also resorted to a tried and tested trick. Big spaces like anchor tenons, uh, we try and put it at, you know, like between the two the, the extremities of the shopping mall so that whatever shops in between will benefit from the traffic travelling between these two, two malls. The aquarium's viewing panels have been boarded up and sealed. Inside, chemical bonding with regulated heating and then cooling of the acrylic causes the joints to fade away. And the aquarium tunnel, too, is finally in place. Thankfully, the aquarium is ready, and it's feeding time for the 32 sand tiger sharks. Lunch is usually slices of mackerel and milkfish. Expensive tuna is on the menu as the occasional special treat. The sharks only consume about 15 kilograms of food daily, a tenth of all the food the kitchen prepares every day. Unless they get regular meals, the sharks could wreak havoc in their enclosed environment. We have the largest stock of sharks anywhere in the world. In the sea, they would take every opportunity to feed that would pass them by. With a routine like feeding at the same time each day, having a food type that's specific to them, um, and also definitely our behaviours can condition the sharks to realise that food will come every single day. Every shark, every ray has been implanted with microchips. And they're all monitored here for their growth from the time they arrive at the tank, their health, their fertility. They need to be monitored if they are pregnant. But one thing Paul need not worry about is the sharks snacking between meals. They would much prefer to wait for the divers to deliver food than to invest energy in hunting. So it eventually, within a month, it starts to settle down and, and the sharks really pay no attention to the fish that are swimming past them. But the fish need more than just feeding. Every day, the 10 million litres of water in the tank circulate through a set of filters for cleaning. The temperature is kept just right at 24 degrees Celsius to keep the fish happy. Forty thousand liters of seawater make its way to the mall. It's a journey the trucks will be making every day for years to come. Each month, slightly more than ten percent of the total water in the giant aquarium, and these truckloads are there simply to top up the natural daily losses from filtration and evaporation. Though it doesn't go straight in with the fish, Gulf water is salty. It has to be diluted, then cleaned and filtered. Okay, so the area that we're in now is the life support system for the main tank of the aquarium. So this is the heart of the aquarium where all the water is processed, cleaned, um, conditioned before reintroduction back with the animals. The system monitors the oxygen content of the water. Its acidity, the air and water pumps, the filters, everything is automated. And there are fail-safes built in. Nothing is left to chance when it comes to the fish's welfare. So if, let's say a pump was to fail down in the basement and that pump was responsible for sending new seawater to the aquarium to top it up when we lose seawater through our foam fractionators. Now if that pump fails, then it will send me a SMS alert in case I'm outside my office and it'll also send an alert to this office. With everything running smoothly, the aquarium looks set to be the highlight of the mall opening. When you go and you look at it, it really touches my heart. And then straight away I say, oh my God, I how can I see the kids? I want to see the kids running around this thing. The day of the opening. Inside the mall, the aquarium is getting a Guinness Award for the largest viewing panel. The chairman had no plans to attend. There was only a handful of press present at the aquarium. Late in the night before, the decision had been taken not to open to the public. It was not opening because it was not ready. We felt that it wasn't ready to receive such a big crowd. It would not have been able to cope. You know what? It could be a month, two months late. In my business, this once in a lifetime. And for us to do it well and to do it right. One month, two months, that's fine. 